Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Print, and welcome to part nine of our Rostock Max V3.2 build series. If you haven't been following along, I suggest you check out the link above and go ahead and pause this segment, review what we've been doing so that you're up to date with where we're at in the build process. If you're not familiar with CMECNC's line of Delta printers, they've got everything from the little tiny guys up to the giant Artemis, and of course the Rostock Max is nothing to laugh about. It's pretty darn big itself. So when we finished up the last part, we had finished building the base, we had installed the towers, and we had got the upper section and the motor mounts installed, and the duet board was screwed down. Now it's time to start putting the belts on this thing, and we're going to be starting off at step 31. So ready? Let's do this. Okay, so I apologize, it's a little bit dark. I actually tried to dim back some of the lights a little bit so that we had less glare off of the towers for this segment so I could get you closer in details on some of this section. So we ended the last segment of the series with step 30 and now we're going to be picking up on step 31 and we're going to be doing the belt routing. There's only a couple of things that you need for this. You're going to need, of course, the belts. You're going to need the six belt clips, which look like, yay, these little tiny things that came out of the skate bag. Um, a zip tie will help you out if you happen to have one, and a pair of needle nose pliers, a number two screwdriver, and of course, a pair of flush cuts. So let's switch camera angles and get started. Okay, so in the manual, there's a picture that shows what orientation the belts go around the pulleys and the drive gear. So let's flash that up on the screen for you really quick. Okay, that should give you an idea of where we're at. And again, you can follow along in the manual. There's a link in the description. So we're just going to start routing the belt through. Now you want to remember two things is that it needs to go inside the track here and your teeth are going to be inside, the flat side is going to be out. Now what I've found trying to do this was we're going to start down here at the bottom and I am going to take this here, let's see if I can get you a better camera angle. That's about the best I can get you. We're going to start off with, with the gears up. I'm going to start pushing this from the bottom through here. It's going to go through all the screws and then we're going to feel as it gets to the back here, kind of feel it onto the pulley and then try to use the pulley as a guide to roll it up to the top. and kind of hopefully that gives us a little bit of a curve to follow and once it does that you can pull it out as you can see there we're going to pull that over we're going to pull it underneath the skate like so oops I missed going under here Go under here, pull it underneath the skate like so, and we're going to push it down to the other end. You want to make sure that your belt stays on that pulley. Should be able to just slow, use the pulley actually to roll it. It's going to come along here. Let's 
Let's get that down. And as it comes up, you can see it coming out here. Okay, that's over. Now we can pull our skate back up to this side just to keep it there. We're going to pull out a length. We're going to create a loop and go. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Let's try to get that in there. Sorry, I cannot get the best angle. We're going to create a loop here. this end again without pulling it out too far we're going to go over that other pulley and we're going to push that back out so it comes back out the other side and then we're going to take this loop and we're going to go over the gear like so so that the pattern matches and now we should have our belt coming out the bottom down to the middle like so and now we can flip this thing over. So let's see if I can do that and get you a view from there. Okay, there we go. So that's our much better view. There's our much better view for that. Now this is where our needle nose pliers and our zip tie are going to come in handy. And of course the clips. So what we want to do is we want to take the top one of these, find the end, and we're going to slide this gently down. I'm going to pull it back. I'm going to use our zip tie as a ramp to get that up high enough that we can pull that through with a set of needle nose pliers like so. I'm going to pull that back. Tuck it under just a tail like that. You don't want it to be longer than this set screw. Sorry, I guess we lost it on camera. You want to pull it back. Don't want it to be longer than the set screw. We're going to hold that down. Then we're going to use our clip, one of our clips, and we're going to lock it in. There we go. Now what we can do is we can take this and can give it a tug, pull it out tight like so. We're going to go back and peek over and make sure that we didn't lose our belt anywhere. We're going to make sure that our motor is tilted all the way to the left, the loosest position. As we pull this through, we make sure down there that we didn't lose it. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use our zip tie to help guide this up and through. Pull that tight. And we're going to clip that on. Okay, now we can leave yourself about an inch or so there. And you can cut off the leftover little piece of belt. Okay, now we can lift this thing back up. Let's switch back over to our other camera. And now if we stand this back up, we should see our motor move with it. Nice and snug. Okay, now what we can do is we need to Tighten up this motor to get the tension good.
what you want is enough tension that the belt can run smoothly all the way up and down and it turns the motor but not so tight that it's breaking okay. so we're going to let me show you that on the other camera okay so you can see that there okay so you can see that there so we're just going to try to tension that up you can see the slack you just want to get it snug And then we're just going to take our number one screwdriver and tighten these down. Okay, those are all tight. And our skate goes up and down nice and good. And our belt stays fairly tight here. All the way up. All the way down. Okay, so that's our first belt. Now we're going to just repeat that two more times. I'm going to go ahead and do that on time lapse and high speed for you. And so we can knock that out really quick like. And this, by the way, takes us all the way down through step 34 uh, in the manual. So we've gone and done through steps 34 for this first belt. We're going to just repeat it through these other two. So let me knock that out quick. Okay, we now have all of our belts on and nice and tight. If you, you recall earlier on, I'd mentioned that you want to snug up the T-slots but not necessarily lock them down super tight. Um, you still don't want to get them super tight, but if you had left any of them loose on the towers, now's a good time to go back and tighten those up just to make sure that they are fully snug now that everything is fitted together and the belts are tensioned. Okay, so that is it for this segment. In the next step, we are going to move on to step 35 um, and start there where we're going to start installing the whip coming down for the strain relief, um, or the whip and the strain relief for the effector. So that's all for today. If you like what we're doing here at Practical Printing, please be sure to subscribe and to hit the bell down below so you're notified when we have new videos out. Again, I apologize if it seems a little bit dark. I wanted to try to cut down the reflection a little bit on these parts so that you could have a better view. And with that, I bid you aloha. Oh, wait, before we go, special thanks goes out to CME CNC for providing the Rostock Max to make this build series possible. Now I bid you aloha.